Hi, my name is John Dooley, and I am the entomologist for the United States Department of Agriculture, Plant Protection and Quarantine at San Francisco, California. My specialty is that I identify all of the white flies and armored scales that accompany shipments coming into the country from all over the world. Aenidiella orientalis is the next one. Okay, this is somewhat oval shaped. Now what you will find on this particular genus, going down the key, uh, Shape reniform to pyriform. This is pyriform, pear shaped. Reniform would mean uh, you very rarely see this species. I very rarely see the reniform. But that would actually mean that uh, these prosomatic lobes all the way on the side will form a huge lobe that will come all the way around, and the pygidium will usually be sunk inside, and it will be basically flanked by two huge lobes. Reniform meaning kidney shaped. So, uh, but this particular one is not. The other one, a near the yellow arancium, arancii, on citrus, is usually found reniform and very rarely found this way. And they're both the same genus. Uh, if I, if we have time, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, um, arancii. I don't know if I have that or not. But anyway. Uh, this is also important. So if you look at it, it's a shape reniform to pyriform, three pairs of well-developed and sub-equal pairs of lobes present. Sub-equal means they're about the same size. Let me bring it up a little more if I can. There. Actually, you can see it on the other screen too, here as well. Now, sub-equal doesn't mean they're equal size. It means they're relatively, they, they do gradually decrease in size and length. This one doesn't show it too well. Up here, you see it. They're, these are still a little smaller, but if they're not sub-equal, these would be a lot smaller, maybe half the size. So they're sub-equal in size. Then there's uh, submarginal clusters of ducts. Remember the other cluster of ducts on Chrysum phallus? Well, if you look at this one, start at the lowest one. This is the edge of the pygidium right here. Here's one cluster. It has to be five or more ducts. Second cluster, one, two, three, four, five. And up here, one, two, three, four, five, six maybe seven. So you have three different clusters. That's specific for this genus. But I'm, I'm sorry, correction, specific for this species. Uh, this species is the one found most, mostly, it does find on uh, citrus, but you find it on palms, especially coconut. Uh, you get coconut, this is a, a good chance of finding this particular one. So you look for those, you look for the three lobes, and you also look and see these plates especially at the end. It does show better here. Well, maybe a little bifurcate here, but these plates are what they call clavate. They're club-like. There are no fringes on them. They're just structures that are curved a little bit. And that's also indicative of at least this species and some others as well. But the three cluster of ducts above the pygidium on the margin is the biggest, uh, uh, we call the, the the greatest uh, trait to use to separate this species from all the others. And I and I, as I said before, subequal. They, these do fall. They do reduce a little bit in size, but shape-wise, they're all pretty close together like that as a medium because they're usually notched on both ends as well. That's something else to look for on medium lobes. You can probably see it here where they're notched on both ends, almost equal, and then they're rounded in the center. Actually, that shows it better over here. And that shows these are clavate type structures. And you'll see where they have no fringes. Unlike here where you have fringes, you have, uh, they call them tines. They're like little combs. They have all kinds of cute names for all these structures that, that uh, 
you need a beer afterwards. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and then one other thing is, and this is important, the anal pore. See it right here, or you see it right here on the LCD. If you take the diameter, and this is sometimes where you use your micrometer, you don't have to make physical measurements. All you use do is units. If you take the distance from here to here, and you take that distance and stack it up until it reaches the anal pore, it's usually this distance, it's usually two up to three times before it gets to the anal pore. It's two to three times removed. Secondly, the anal pore, you'll notice, see how big the anal uh, lobes are? The anal lobe is as big as the anal pore, the diameter of the anal pore. And uh, that's also very, very important. A lot of times, the diameter of the anal lobe will be much greater than the diameter of the pore. There are some like diaspidiotis where the anal pore is a lot smaller than this. And it's also displaced maybe two or three times the distance from the base of the anal lobes. So that's an important structure. And that's uh, with A and EDL, it's always going to be like that. If you, see, if you see something like this, that's real close and sitting right on top of the anal plates, it ain't any, an EDL or you might have something new.